Well, hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video, we're going to learn the pH calculations. It's... Welcome back. Now before we get into the actual lesson, I want to point out something on your calculator. So be sure to grab it. And because every calculator is set up a little differently, you're going to want to get familiar with the layout of your particular device. But the crux of this entire lesson is based off of you learning one button. And it is this one right here. On my calculator, it's right up top. It is the log button. And most calculators also paired up with the, uh, the 10 to the X or the anti-log. So for on mine, I'm just going to hit the second and then the log button and I'll be able to use it. Now this is based off of what's known as the logarithmic scale. Now if you've never heard of that before, well let me explain it real quick, uh, quickly here. A logarithmic scale is one that is based off of a factor of 10. And the pH scale is a logarithmic scale, which basically means this. A pH of 4 and a pH of 5 might seem like there's a difference of 1, but in reality there's actually a difference of 10. A uh, pH of 4 and a pH of 6 are not separated by 2, and it's not separated by 20, it's actually separated by 100, or 10 squared. So keep going on with that. A pH of 4 and a pH of 7 Okay, so that's a difference of 3, so that's 10 to the third power, so there's actually a difference of 1,000. Okay, so that's really all that that is, but that being said, you don't really have to fully understand the concept of a logarithmic scale, you just have to know how to hit that log button, when to use it, how to use it, and that's really what this lesson is all about. So, without further ado, let's get on into the computer. Let's go! All right, so here we go with the pH calculations. I've got all the formulas written out up top here. I'm going to point out that when you see an ion like this written in brackets, that's simply shorthand notation for concentration. Okay, it just makes it a little easier for us to write it out. Um, now, I know these formulas look a little intimidating, but trust me, if you follow along with the easy process that I'm about to show you, you will understand this in no time. Um, I'm also going to point out that uh, since you can't really see my calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out literally what I am typing into my calculator so that you guys can follow along. That being said, however, there are two different styles of calculators that are out there. There are some that require you to type in the number first, and then there are others that require you to type in the, the process, whether it's the log or the, the 10 to the x first. So I will do my best to try to explain how to do both of those. That way you guys can follow along. All right. And if you look at our table here, you can see that essentially what we're supposed to be able to do is to take one of the four concepts and be able to find the other three. And trust me, it's a lot easier than it looks. All right, so let's start with this first example here. So we have a pH of 4.3, and we need to find the hydrogen concentration, the pOH, and the hydroxide concentration. Well, the easiest one to find here is the pOH because pH plus pOH equals 14. So I'm going to simply do 14 minus 4.3, right? So I'm going to type in 14 minus 4.3, right? And what you get is 9. Point seven. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the pH and we're going to find the hydrogen concentration. So that is this formula right here, which requires the use of the 10 to the X button on the calculator, which is usually paired up with the log button. So you'll do the second function and then 10 to the X. All right, so for the calculators that require you to type in the number first, what you're going to do is you're going to type in negative 4.3 first, then second 10 to the x, right? So you type in negative 4.3, then second 10 to the x, and then you hit equals. Or if you have a different style of calculator that requires the, the process first, what you will type in, you'll hit second 10 to the x, then you type in negative 4.3 you hit equals. And when you do that, what you get is 5.01 times 10 to the negative fifth power. Now some calculators won't automatically put that 
in scientific notation for you, so you'll have to do that on your own. Uh, just remember to move the decimal over and count the number of decimal places, and that's your exponent. Okay, so we're going to do the same process now. We're going to take the pOH in order to find the hydroxide concentration. So what I will do in my calculator, since mine requires a number first, I will type in negative 9.7, then I'm going to hit second 10 to the x. Okay, or you do the second 10 to the x, and then you type in negative 9.7. Right? And when you do that, you get something that's like 1.995 times 10 to the negative 10th. So I'm going to round that to 2.0 times 10 to the negative 10th power. Okay, So that's what you do when you start with the pH or the pOH. But what if you start with one of the concentrations? Well, let's try it out. So here we're starting with a hydrogen concentration of 2.8 times 10 to the negative 9th power. So I'm going to use this equation right here using the actual log button. So if your calculator requires the number first, I'm going to type in 2.8 EE. Remember the EE button. We don't type in times 10. You type EE, negative 9. I'm going to type that in first. Then I'm going to hit the log button, then I'm going to hit the positive slash negative button in order to make it a positive number. Okay, And uh, then what you get is 8.6. Okay, um, If your calculator goes the other way, then you will type in uh, negative log, so negative button first, then the log, and then you type in 2.8 uh, EE negative 9. Okay, and you should get the same answer. And then once you have this pH of 8.6, well, then it's really simple. pH plus pOH equals 14, right? So 14 minus 8.6, and you get 5.4. And then to get the hydroxide concentration, we're going to do the same thing we did in the last step, right? I'm going to do uh, this, the 10 to the x, negative 5.4. So when you do that, you end up with 3.98. 8 times 10 to the negative 6th power. Okay? And you guys uh, should know what's coming up. If you've been watching these videos, you know that I'm going to tell you to pause this video and work out the next two on your own just to make sure that you really know how to do it. All right, so get ready to pause here in 1, 2, 3, pause. All right, so here are the answers and check them out. See how you did. If you have any further questions, just let me know. Thanks a lot, guys. If you have any further questions about pH, please be sure to comment below. Or if you have a specific question you'd like me to work out for you, you can also comment, or you can just send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button, and you will find that your life is that much better for it. Thanks a lot, guys. Remember, I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Dude.